Got a tidbit of information here for you. Did you know that Tuesdays are the hottest trading day of the entire week on the market? It's true. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is March 21st. It is Tuesday. Now, we're going to do what we always do. We're going to take a look at some OTC and some penny stocks. Not just any old stocks, hot stocks. Well, stocks that have potential. We're not looking for stocks that already ran. We're actually looking for stocks that are under the radar and set up to run. And it's like, well, how do you do that? I mean, don't you need the news or some catalyst to make it run? Yes, you do. However, to get ahead of the game, I think it's important to have a warm chart. And that's what I do. I look at the charts first. I'm looking for a chart that's already set up for a breakout or has a lot of volume coming in. Then I go finding news to back it up. Could be current news, could be lingering news. Something they said a month ago about something that's going to happen in two weeks from now. And while the stock is calm, and the price is down, now is a good time to get in. So these are the sort of stocks I'm looking for. Now, when I do research on all these stocks, and when I say all these stocks, I'm referring to the fact that we're looking at stocks on every market, the OTC, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, because a penny stock is nothing more than any stock under five bucks. And they're on every market. And I got nothing against any of them. Well, I do my research here for all of them, major exchange and OTC. I'm doing them at the otcmarkets.com website. Now, it's perfect for those OTC stocks. This is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC for every stock. I love it. I get my news here. Just click this link right there, and you get all the news coming in as it's coming out. You're keeping up with it. I don't get any of my OTC news from any other site right here. But they bring in a lot of news for the major exchanges too. So this is going to save you a lot of time one way or another. And if you're not finding what you're looking for, hey, be my guest. Go to Google. It's always waiting for you. So how did our OTC market finish today? Uh, we've got some mixed numbers up there and it's not great. Let's refresh that and hope for a bounce. We got a little bounce. Our dollar volume, we need to be up at 2 billion. We're down at 1.4. But in saying that, we haven't seen 2 billion in so long, I can't even remember when it was. Share volume, we're up. We were at 5 billion yesterday. I think it was 4.7 the day before. We're at 6.8 today. That's good. We are climbing, but we need to hit 10 billion. That's getting into second gear. We're not making any headway here in first gear. And trades, we're in reverse. We are coming down from 250,000, which was the floor for a very long time. We came under it in February, virtually the whole month, just got back over it, and now we're back under it. And for a couple of days now, we have been falling. So things are not looking like they're improving right now on the OTC market. But I'm always looking for stuff that is better than that. And I got a few of them to share with you right now. Come on. Our first stock comes from the major exchange. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is TOI, ticker T-O-I, the Oncology Institute. And as you've probably already guessed, they are involved with cancer, cancer care. Now, the reason we're looking at TOI is because of her chart. That's how we're identifying all of the stocks we're talking about today. But her chart is not in a setup for a breakout. No, not by any means. She's in recovery mode. Uh, not too long ago, she came out with a financial that was disappointing to the investors, to say the least. They took it out on the price of the stock, and it fell. Looks like it's hit its bottom, and it's bouncing back now. Now, as you're going to see, as we look at the financials and their revenues, she doesn't look bad at all. They just got upset about this one financial, took their wrath out on it, and I think she's coming up now. It was an overreaction, and there are some gains to be taken here. So TOI, she finished today at 67 cents with just a little over 31% gains. Now, when we're looking at major exchange stocks, whenever you see a price under a dollar, you have to take concern with that. They have what's called a minimum bid price requirement on the major exchange. If the stock goes under a dollar for six months, they're in hot water. They get a warning. They got to get their price up over a dollar for 10 days straight, or they're going to be kicked off the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange down to the OTC. Now, I've checked. TOI has been under a dollar for three months, so she's not in hot water yet, but she's getting close. So, sooner rather than later, she needs to get that price up over a dollar. 
So what does this company do? As I said, they are involved with cancer care. They were founded in 2007 and they are advancing oncology by delivering highly specialized value-based cancer care in the community setting. TOI offers cutting edge evidence-based cancer care to a population of approximately 1.7 million patients. Wow. Including clinical trials, transfusions, and other care delivery models traditionally associated with the most advanced care delivery organizations. With uh, 90 plus employed technicians and more than 700 teammates in over 50 clinic locations and growing, TOI is changing oncology for the better. So they've got a huge practice, 1.7 million patients. Wow, that is a lot. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, let's see, we have got an increase. Oh, a nice increase. About four times, 400% increase, just under 200,000 shares a day to just under a million today. Share structure for the company. All right, our outstanding share count isn't too bad. We got 74 million. But no other information here and you can't get it from a financial on a major exchange so we have to resort to Google what do we got over here for Google all right we have 29 57 huge difference another 29 anything else to consider here uh, looks like that's it so we got two 29s and a 59 so I would think roughly 30 million but it could be 59 who's to say in either case it's gonna be under 74 million so it's not a bad float regardless of what it is financials for the company all right looking over the last three years coming through COVID right we've got an increase every year 187 million, 203 million, 252 million at the end of 2022. For those of you who missed it, on these charts, you've got to add three zeros behind any of the numbers to make them make sense. Looking at the quarterly isn't going to help because this is right up until December 2022. And unless they give us anything for 2023, they've just broke down the quarters. But as you can see, they've been making steady revenues, even had a very strong last quarter, right? And when we look at their balance sheet, looking at their total assets, everything together, 261 million. You got to add three zeros here too. Looking at their total liabilities, about half, 138 million. So they've got like 130 million in assets and they're making strong revenues. And yet everybody was upset with their financials. Taking a look at her disclosures. We do have some recent disclosures here, and I've already jumped into these, all of these, the 8Ks, the 10K, they're all about our financials. But this one down here, this one came out February 9th, the 13G, 13G, 13D. These are beneficiary ownership, or you can think of them as taking on a new partner. Somebody's bought a whole lot of shares that they now own a percentage of the company and have voting rights. This is FMR LLC. They just bought 12 million shares and now are the proud owner of 16.5% of this company. All right, let's take a look at that news. I don't think they have any news here except about their financials. No, they don't. But it is in the financials that we get the rest of what we need here. The company has financial stability. But the financials came out and the stock fell. So if you're going to be jumping into this, you want to know that they're financially stable. Looking at the highlights of 2022, this just came out March 16th, just a few days ago. Uh, they just got $110 million invested into them by Deerfield Management. They ended the fiscal year with $132 million in cash and cash equivalents. They generated over $1.7 million in savings to patients through the company's dispensary co-pay assist program, added three new gain share contracts in Florida, and completed six practice acquisitions. Their consolidated revenues were $71 million dollars compared to 52 million last year that is a 36 percent increase gross profit they're into profit they had 16 million dollars which is an increase of 87 percent compared to the same quarter last year everything is growing here
And then they give us projections for 2023. A lot of companies don't do this. A lot of the small penny stocks. We've got projections here. They tell us that they are expecting revenues of 290 to 320 million, representing approximately a 15 to 27 percent growth from 2022. A gross profit of 60 to 70 million. So everything is on track, everything is going. So I expect this company's price right now to have hit the floor. Everybody's done beating this stock up for financials that came out, I think it was on the third. Now she's starting to come back up. Now would probably be a good time to get a seat on this little rocket. We're going to be doing all of our charting on these stocks on Think or Swim, my free trading platform I got from TD Ameritrade. So can you. This is TOI, ticker T-O-I, the Oncology Institution. We got a six-month, four-hour view here. We have a high back in August of $7.60, and we hit a low a couple days ago of $0.45. Cents. As you can see, she has been falling. She did a lot of consolidating right here at about $1.44. She's just kind of stuck in that zone. And then out came those financials. It looks like it was on the 9th, and she had that big fall. And you can see lots of volume came in for the sell. And right now, the volume's coming in for the buy. We're on the other side of that low bubble starting to come up. And we've got a beautiful setup here on our PPO and our ADX. You see that perfect mirror image right here? It's all coming together and then coming apart. Well, as that red line and blue line are coming together, 100% guaranteed your price is falling. Come straight up from where the two of these start to come together what's happening? The price is falling. Look at where the price is green now. Come straight down. They came as close as they were going to get, and now they're separating. You got that fish mouth, right? That is a guaranteed sign on these two technicals, your PPO and your ADX, when they are set up like this, that your price is rising. So things look good there. We got a strong crossover on her MACD. She is way down here deep, but she's rolling right on up right now. Look at all of our green bars accumulating. We were deep underneath the basement floor on the RSI. No doubt about that. But we've come up out of that, and we're at 43 right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, so we've got a high back here of a $1.60. She's on top of her 50. She's hanging onto that as best she can until those financials came out. It was on the 9th, and she fell down here to that low bubble. And you can see the lows are getting higher. Every single one of those lows is higher than the one before it. That's a sign of growth. She's floating on top of her 9-day SMA, has crossed her 50-day SMA. Everything is looking grand here. See our pattern? Do you see how the blue line is separating from the ADX, that red and blue? That means the price is climbing. We've just had a crossover on our PPO. MACD has just crossed the signal line. RSI is bouncing off the ceiling right now and is sitting at 66. Coming down to our five-day, five-minute view. Ooh, look at that 200, right? I mean, it's just curving around. It's actually starting to climb right now. Our price was at 77 cents back here under the 200, hit a downdraft here, got pushed down to 45 cents, took a whole day to get back to the 200. Now she's crossed it today and she is starting to grow. Everything is set up beautiful here. And looking at our oscillators, Everything is warm right now. There is a, a downtrend. I'm not quite sure where that's coming from, but I would keep my eye on that. But the important thing here is, is that she's down too low. She has started bouncing off of that low bubble. We have crossed our first 200 and the others are close. This could be a nice runner. Now, how far can she go up? Let's back this up. Where would our, our expectations take us to? Well, as I said, we put a uh, support right in where she fell from. I don't think there's any reason why we can't expect that on a good day. You know, coming up halfway to about right here, 89 cents or 135 cents. And right now we are at 67 cents. So you're looking at about 35% uh, gains to over 100% gains just on recovery. And boy, the charts look good. We now got a penny stock on the OTC. This is ticker S-E-Z-N-L, Sezzle Inc. 
Now her chart, it is set up for a breakout. You've got that 200 come right on down, leveled out, prices up underneath it, just looking for an excuse to jump. And I found an excuse. <laughs> I got lots of filings over here. I got a nice news press, fresh. The problem is, is that I think it's under the radar. Not just the company, the news. The reason I say that is this news press has not been released as a news press. It doesn't come out. You look over here, what do we got? No news, none at all. And it is not in Google. I go looking around on Google for it. It's not there. So where did I find it? In the filing. But it's a picture. It's an image. It's not even text. So I don't even know if Google can find it. So I think it's under the radar. Nobody has actually seen this news yet. And I think when it gets out, it's going to help this price get up over that 200 so she can start to move. So, Cezo Inc., she finished the day at 40 cents with about 17.5% gains. She is on the pink tier. She's current and she has none of those green ticks I'm always telling you about. The verified profile and the verified transfer agent. These are important to see if you're in a stock for a long hold because they represent a lot of important information that's being validated behind the scenes. And you want as much validated information as you can get with the pink because you're not getting much with the disclosure. No CPA is looking at the numbers. Those are just being given to you by the management. So whenever you get some validated information, it's a good thing. Now, if we're just going to play Sezzle for a quick day trade or a short swing, no problem. We don't have to worry about that. So what does this company do? Well, they're a payments company for the consumer when they shop online. Sezo is a technology-driven payments company based in the United States with the mission of financially empowering the next generation. Sezo provides a payments platform that facilitates fast, secure, and easy payments between consumers and retailers. Sezo's payment product is a short-term, interest-free installment plan. The Sezzo platform allows end customers to make online purchases and effectively split the payment for the purchase over four equal interest-free payments over six weeks. So that's what they do, and they're making money doing that. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, what do we got? <laughs> About even Steven. She fell just a smidge. I mean, she's under the radar. She's only doing 6.8 thousand shares a day. And today she barely got over 6,000 with just a wee bit of drop. So she is under the radar, as I said. Share structure for the company. What do we got over here? Okay, we've got 208 million outstanding no information here. I actually couldn't find it in the pink, so I had to go do a search over at Google, and I only found one number. I could not find any other numbers, so they tell us it's 105 million. What is the outstanding? 208. That's not bad. We're at about 50%. So maybe that's the float, maybe it's not. Financials for Cezzo Inc. All right, she's been climbing. Over the COVID period of time, we went from 58 million to 114 million to 125 million. And again, this takes us to December of 2022. So we're not getting anything over here except that they wanted you to know about this. They put it out in a press release. It has not been released as a financial yet. We've still got uh, two, three weeks, and then they probably got a month after that before they have to file. But they wanted us to know. So over here in the filings is where they decided to put this news press. It's right here on this 8K that came out yesterday. And the whole point to this 8K was to announce this news press. Press release of the company dated March 20th. So where is it? I could not find it on Google, but it is right here. But as I said, it's a picture. I can't highlight any of this. So I don't know how Google would go about indexing this for other people to find. Not real smart. So I'm going to touch on to some of these February business update facts here so that you can see what's going on. And I think when this information gets out, because they are growing, I think it's going to help this price to move. Total income for February increased almost 30% year over year to $10.7 million. An important one, Cezzo achieved profitability in February, posting positive net income. That is huge. Cezzo's premium 
has over 138,000 active subscribers as of March of this year. As of February of this year, they had $68 million in cash and could borrow up to $47 million more. They let us know here that they did have a little bit of money deposited in with Silicon Valley, about 2%, but it didn't affect their business. In either case, they've pulled that out and they've put it into another bank. Then we've got an important piece of news here. They are planning to uplist to the NASDAQ. Now, this is very important, though it's good news if you're holding the stock, you've got to prepare yourself for a reverse split. You got to be at least $3 to get onto the NASDAQ. We're at 40 cents. Eight times four is $3.20. So we would have to do at least a one in eight reverse split to get up there. And nothing says they have to just go to $3. They could go to five, 10, whatever the heck they want. In either case, they would have to get a reverse split unless we, the investors, could organically push the price up to $3 before then, which I really don't see happening. Uh, let's see what else we can get out of this. Oh yeah, one last piece of information. Everything that they are doing right now, they say management does not foresee any near-term capital needs due to the company's strong liquidity position and operational performance reflected in positive net income and adjusted EBITDA. That's the whole bottom line. The company's got good news here ahead of the financial. It says peekaboo. I didn't even know they were allowed to do this. So they've got all this information. If they would literally put this out as a press release, let Google find it, put it in the search engine so everybody can see it, we'll probably see some better gains because even with the little bit of volume she did today, 6,100 shares, she did go up 17.65%. What do you think will happen when everybody hears about it? Maybe some more? <laughs> Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's see if we can find any sizzle with sizzle. This is ticker S-E-Z-N-L, six month, four hour view. Our high and low bubble are very close. Six months ago, she hit 90 cents. A few days later, she hit 13 cents. And ever since then, she's been stuck in the middle between the two. She was going sideways here for quite a while, then made a jump. Once that 200 day SMA got close, right? She made a jump for it. She got up there, slid down a little bit, and she has fallen underneath her 200 and her 50 day SMA right now. And our technicals are looking low. Everything is pushing down a wee bit right now. And our volume volume is super duper low right now. 20 day, one hour view. All right. You can see she hasn't been getting a lot of trading. We don't have a lot of bars here. Our low, that's 32 cents here under the 50 day SMA. The next day, she darn near doubled that 100% jump to 59 cents. She's come back down to a low here of 36 and now a low of 34. And now she's starting to come back up. Things don't look great. I will grant you that. Our technicals, they're, they're trying to recover right now. I see our ADX is falling and this is trying to come up. Isn't quite there yet. We have a crossover attempting to happen here and our RSI is actually pushing up. Thank God for the little things, eh? Five day, five minute. That's it, folks. We had 15 minutes of trading in the last five days. Not a lot of volume. Under the radar by all means. She jumped from 34 cents to 40 cents and she's holding right there right now. Technicals, everything is flat. Really, I don't see a whole lot going on, but when you don't have any volume, that's what you have. It is just frozen. And I think, honestly, the news being put in an image format hidden inside a filing, I think is the absolute worst place to possibly put it. So I am thinking somebody's going to come to their senses and tomorrow or the next day it's going to be released and then maybe the volume's going to come into this. Remember, with only 6,100 shares, we got just under 20% gains today. And I'm sure it was about that news that came out yesterday. So S-E-Z-N-L, wild card on your watch list. No, it's not deja vu. We've been here before. We looked at ticker SWISF, Secure Private Data, on the 15th, just about a week ago. She was looking good then. She had a nice warm chart, broke out over her 50, still under the 200. But with the news, I thought there was something to be gained. 
and I must have been right, since then we've gone up virtually 100%. Well, she's just had more news come out, and the chart looks even better. Now it's red hot. She has just now broken out over that 200-day SMA and has already got a run started. So I think it's a good time to look at her again. SWISF, Secure Private Data, she finished the day at about 6.5 cents with almost 7.5% gains. She's on the top tier of the OTC, the QX. This is the most transparent, most trustworthy tier you can be on. They have to audit their financials to be here, and they give us all the information about the company. And they've got every green tick we could ask for here. Verified profile, transfer agent verified, independent directors. You got to have those if you're uplisting. I'm sure they used them when they came up to the QX, but if they want to go to the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, they're going to need them then as well. And we got a bonus here. They're penny stock exempt. This should assure you that they're not risky like a startup company because the actual definition states the company must be in business for three to five years, have millions of dollars of assets during that entire time, and kept up with their financial filings. They've done that. So even though they are only six and a half cents and they're on the OTC market, they literally are not considered a penny stock anymore because they're not risky like penny stocks are. Guess we shouldn't be looking at it, right? All right, let's go look at something. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, so what does this company do? They tell us here that Secure Private Data is a cybersecurity and internet privacy provider of Swiss hosted solutions for secure communications and secure data management. Just so you have a clearer understanding, here's a few, few bullets about what they do. They have Secure Mail a private and encrypted email solution with added security and privacy features such as Secure Send and Secure Reply. Secure Messenger sends encrypted chats to members of Secure and non-members through their Chat by Invite feature. They also have Secure VPN, Virtual Private Network, so your computer can send information out and it'll land in someone else's computer before it goes to its ultimate destination. Then it comes back the same way. This keeps you uh, encrypted, this keeps you secure, no viruses, and it keeps you private. They're launching this late March of this year, right now. They've got news out on that, and that is based out of Switzerland. They also have something very interesting coming out here in June. Secure Voice. This is a non-VoIP voice call system. Now, VoIP is Voice Over Internet Protocol. That's how we talk over the internet through our chats. Well, they've got something new called Encrypted Tunneling Technology. And last and not least is their biggest package, Secure Pro, which is a complete enterprise privacy solution platform for businesses. So that's what they're all about. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, she jumped a wee bit. Come on. I know it was a slow day. Absolutely was. Even though Tuesdays are the hottest days on the market, the OTC isn't getting much heat. She went from 106,000 shares a day to 123,000 shares a day. Definitely under the radar. Share structure for this company. Okay, we've got an outstanding share count of 117 million, and we've got a few numbers here. 105 for the unrestricted, 86 for the float. What does Google say? Well, let's see. Going from the top down, we got 78.9, 78.9, and that's it. 78.9, and I don't think that was any of our choices over here. So I'm going to go with 78.9, roughly 80 million shares. They said 86 million. We know it's under 117 million. <laughs> Looking at the financials for secure private data, at the end of 2021, they did $114,000 worth of business. Didn't cost them one red cent. They got to keep every penny that they made. Looking at the quarterly, we're not going to see anything new, right? This is up to December. Oh, no, we will. This is 2021. Let's see what we got for 2022. Uh, we've got three quarters here, 70,000, 87,000, and 86,000. And what was that last one? 114. So we've already gone beyond that, pretty much doubled it, and we've still got one more quarter to go. Disclosures. 
All right, we've only got one recent disclosure here, the F1A. This is about them putting units on the market. Units is a share of stock and a warrant. You get them as a package deal. Outside of that, we've got nothing here. So let's take a look at that news. Our news is going back here to February of this year, and this is when we looked at it. These two pieces of news were the two pieces I thought were enough to get this stock moving. Secure Private Data will soon be launching it. Swiss hosted Secure VPN for privacy enthusiasts. And Secure Private Data announces its 2023 budget is fully covered with existing cash flow. So we were seeing they had lots of money and they were bringing out a new product. Since we looked at it, they've had more news come out. Uh, the company reduces customer acquisition cost. Uh, the company launches new free disposal anonymous emails for its Swiss hosted secure mail solution. Confirms it has no deposit or relationship with SVB Bank. And then the news that I think is hot. Secure private data featured on Silicon Review as top five cybersecurity companies to watch for 2023. That came out on the 16th, about a week ago. And then, as I said, news about the VPN. The company set to launch Swiss-hosted Secure VPN. First 5,000 subscribers get 60% yearly discount, in case you're interested. So, this is what we have. We don't even have to jump into any of the news. The company's doing well. Things are growing for them. And there seems to be a lot of activity around the price right now. It has been growing since the 15th and it looks strong right now. Well, let's quit talking about it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Returning to the scene of the crime. This is ticker SWISF, six month, four hour view. We got a high back here in August of 23 cents, the last time she got through that 200 day SMA. Fell all the way down to a low, about a thousand percent down to 2.7 cents at the beginning of January. And it was right here on that blue line that we looked at at last. That was on the 15th. She was at about uh three and a half cents and right now she's at about six and a half cents so we're at about 80 percent gains she has been riding in this channel all the way up even after we looked at it she's been picking up some momentum gotten up over top of that 200 and hasn't looked back she is still growing and all of our technicals are looking outstanding every single one of them is going for the moon right now you can't go wrong if your oscillators are all pointing up Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So there's our channel right there. She has broke out of that channel. She's in breakout. She's already broke out over the 200. This channel is where she was stuck in for the most part. And now she's broke out of that. Hitting a high today of uh, 0 0.0656. Volume has been light right now, but the technicals are showing there's still growth on the table. Our PPO, our percentage price oscillator is pushing up like our MACD is. RSI has been climbing for the last few days and is at 61 right now. Looking at that five day, five minute view. Steady climb. Here's our 50 day SMA. She was underneath it at her low, just under five cents. Jumped up onto that 50 day. She keeps spiking underneath it, but she keeps coming back up and now she has abandoned it. Left even the 20 and is now stuck to her nine day SMA. She's starting to float. The price is getting light now. It's getting off the heavy SMAs, which hold her down. She's gotten onto the lightest one and she is rising. All of our technicals here say just that. I see a slight turn up right there, not a turn up, turn up. <laughs> on our PPO and we've got a MACD with a crossover imminent right now and our RSI is climbing. The charts are looking good. They're steady, they're reliable, there's nothing crazy going on here. I like what I see here, but of course, do your own DD. SWISF, she may be good for a second run here. Not every stock needs a huge catalyst to run especially if you have a warm chart. Even a small, soft catalyst can get that running. And those are the sort of stocks we were looking at today. They have small, soft catalysts, but all the charts are in great position to give us some gains. Now we've been doing due diligence by looking at charts, but you can do it any way you want. Just do it. <laughs> Remember, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow.
See ya.